Hey guys, welcome back to MassiveSynth.com tutorials. This is part three of the electronica sounds feature we've been doing this month on Massive, making some more kind of experimental sounds using Massive. And today I was going to show you how to make that ARP sound I was playing for you there. And also the drums I have playing on this sequence are both kind of drum beats I've programmed or drum sequences are programmed using Massive. So I was going to quickly show you how I put them together at the end of the tutorial as well. So let's start with this ARP though first and let's create a new sound in Massive and program this ARP. So we only use one oscillator for this sound and um, we use a smooth square and just take the compression off for now as well. Um, and just put the wave table position to halfway and just pull the intensity down of that oscillator and that's I mean we're only going to use one oscillator for this sound to just keep the the tone quite pure and quite clean it's worked better with just one kind of smooth square wave table really so so next we can set up the filter so in filter one slot going to have a DAF filter and then pull the resonance down to zero and the cutoff down and so what I'm going to do to create that kind of envelope shape we had on the ARP there I'm going to use a performer to modulate both the cutoff frequency and this intensity here to kind of bring a nice tight kind of top end to to the sound. So with the cutoff at zero and the intensity of the oscillator one at zero, let's move to the first LFO slot here and and let's set it up as a performer looping over three steps and sync this performer, take the ratio to one over twelve and if I modulate the cutoff frequency with this performer, drag the crosshair of this performer to the cutoff frequency of the DAF filter, and then click and drag up. So it's kind of just past the, the F there, and then you'll get got this performer controlling this cutoff frequency now. And if we set this performer up like this. got a quite cool kind of envelope shape and sort of sequence going on there and I noticed setting up this sound like with the intensity of this oscillator one at zero we apply the same or similar modulation here just maybe not quite as high just maybe to about a quarter of the way around we're getting that increased kind of brightness on the sound if I turn that modulation off It's just bringing a bit more top end into the sound using this kind of intensity. The intensity control is a bit like a low pass filter on these oscillators when you're in spectrum mode. So with that set up, let's move over. And what we're going to do to create the arpeggiator, we're going to use two steppers uh, as effectively two separate arpeggiators. So for the first stepper, we'll create the kind of general riff that we had playing there. So drag the crosshair of this stepper to the first pitch modulation slot on oscillator 1 and then let's go plus 12 so holding alt or option click and drag up to move in increments of one octave at a time to plus 12 and let's set up this stepper here so I want it on the same time signature as the performer so the performer is 1 over 12 um, but I'm going to go slightly slower so I'm going to keep it as 12 there for the bottom half but take the ratio to 4 over 12 and then just pull the steps down to 12 so it'll be nice and in sync with the first performer that we've set up there uh, and if we activate the snap to grid function I can then apply steps at an exact value 3.00 so for, for steps 1, 2 and 3 keep them at 0 4, 5 and 6 we're going to go plus 3 7, 8 and 9 we're going to go plus 8, 10 and 11 
plus 6 and then for step 12 plus 5 so we have a sequence like this Okay, so what we can do next is set up the second stepper or arpeggiator to do like a kind of counter riff really. So this third LFO convert into a stepper and let's drag a crosshair of this stepper to the second pitch modulation slot on oscillator one and hold an alt or option, click and drag up and go plus twelve again on the pitch modulation amount. And then let's set this stepper up. Like we can loop this over three steps, sync it, ratio 1 over 12 and what I want to do is set the third step, just go plus 7 on that third step so now we get you hear that? every third kind of note I guess is getting that that plus seven, that like little extra riff if I turn it off. Which just adds another kind of dimension to the sort of like the hook or the loop really, so and quickly just set the amp envelope, just sharpen up the attack there. Okay, so next thing I was going to set up with the sound was some noise. So using this noise generator down here, keep it as white noise, uh, the color all the way up, and then just modulate the amp using this first performer. So click and drag the crosshair of that performer to the first pit, to the first modulation slot on the amp. Click and drag it up, and then so now we should get some noise on the sound. We can actually use a macro here to just control, use a volume control for that noise. So click and drag the crosshair this first macro over to the second modulation slot on the amp of the noise uh, and activate the sidechain feature and just check that dash underneath the first modulation slot. So the arrow is clicking upwards. So now this macro is now a volume control for the noise. So I thought it was a cool kind of like to vary up the sound if you wanted to, to bring a bit more kind of sustain or release into it was with this second filter slot we've got no filter selected. So we can actually pull in this, the mix of the two filters, it's in parallel mode so it's running through the two both fills at the same time, you can actually pull this mix slider down and just get a bit more kind of sustain or release on the sound. So we can use a macro to control that again. So we can go ahead and rename this macro sustain. So, So the final thing to set up with this sound really is some effects. So in the first effect slot, add a classic tube and just keep the dry, wet and drive around one third of the way up. Just adding a bit of beef to the sound. And in the second effect slot, we can add a sync delay uh, and just keep the dry, wet really sort of just, you know, very subtle. So maybe one eighth of the way up and push the damp up a little bit and let's set the left channel at 2 over 16 and the right at 3 over 16 so we get a nice stereo effect on the delay just pull that dry weight down a bit further I think and that's the sound done so the other thing I had going on here was this FabFilter Pro-C compressor uh, and it's not just smashing it too much, it's just it's quite subtle really. Slow attack, fast release, um, thresholds minus 26 dB, ratio about 5 to 1, the classic style, so the sort of analogue kind of sort of feel to it. 
soft knee as well. And it's just kind of helping shape the tone, just firming up the kind of arp sound a little bit. So yeah. So the next thing, or the final things to look at really in this tutorial, were these drum sequences I programmed. So, and this one as well. So together there. And um, yeah, it was just it was similar to part two of this series where we looked at making or programming our own drum sequence in Massive. I've set this drum sequence up in a similar way. So that's the kick drum sequence, the hi-hats, these are the hi-hats because we've got the hi-hats and clap on the same performer here. And so the cool thing with this was the, was the shuffly hats that I programmed using this bottom performance sequence, these, these kind of shapes, I've kind of created this sort of shuffle on the hi-hats, which I thought was pretty cool. So the clap and then the kick. Some classic tube and some reverb. Um, and then also this break sound. Again, it's a sequence programmed in Massive. using sine waves and noise generators really to create the kick drums and claps and then I've got this stepper here is controlling this reverb send so which is quite a cool effect so I've got this stepper here modulating the dry wet control of this reverb uh, and then this sequence programmed in so As the note sustains, we get the kind of like last half of the the sequence, or I think the second bar. We get um, the second two bars. We get this kind of reverb send that gets bigger and bigger, which is quite a cool sort of just almost like a bit of a fill happening really with the sound. So, yeah. I've actually also got some compression on this this drum sequence, just the Fab Filter Pro C compressor again, and I just used the par parallel compression preset and just tweaked it a little bit, but it just has a really nice kind of effect on those drums. If I bypass it, it's just bringing them to the front a little bit more and just kind of like tightening them up a bit and stuff. So, so yeah. Um, that's it really. So any questions about how we put that ARP sound together or any of the drum sequences using Massive, please get in touch, let us know. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And thanks for watching. All right, cheers. Bye.